Hello, Donnie Smith here, and welcome to the Where Are They Now podcast. This is the podcast that interviews people that have uh, attended collision repair or, or automotive training in the past and kind of what they're up to, and uh, are people that's involved with the automotive industry and how they got involved and, and what that has led to. And today we have a very interesting story. We have Becky Sue Huff with us. And she is very in, uh, passionate about the automotive in- industry and has a really neat story to share with us. She is the founder of Gasoline Girls Club. And actually, that's where I first read about her, is uh, reading on their blog they have. It's a car club. It's an all-girls cl- gar- uh, car club. Is that correct? Yes, all-girls car club based out of Southern California. Okay. And they have a blog, and that's where I read about her. And uh, I actually got to meet her at SEMA this year. She's a... Uh, uh, works with Chicago Nomadic Tools as well. Uh, she was giving out posters there, and, and they sponsor some of her racing that she does. In fact, she just had a race. And uh, I'll just go ahead and turn it over to Becky. You want to tell us a little bit about how you got interested into the automotive industry? Certainly. Um, I've always been um, interested in automotively inclined guys, um, most likely because of the fact that my father is a mechanic. He always has been since I was a little girl. But um, my, I didn't learn how to work on cars from my father. He was always taking care of things for me. Um, so occasionally I would hand him rent. I've learned a lot mostly from my fiancé that I've been dating for four years. And he owns his own business, the Department of Customs. And I just have been hanging out at his shop, getting, you know, familiarizing myself with the tools. Um, my first classic car is a 1952 Packard Mayfair two-door hardtop that uh, Matt bought for me. He and I restored that car in 30 days for the Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Weekender car show. Cool. And um, that was my first restoration project. I learned a lot. I was learning as I went along. Um, nothing major in that particular, you know, build. I mean, I removed all the pieces I was responsible for keeping them organized since we were putting them right back on. I sandblasted things. I ground off the surface rust in the hood of, you know, in the interior of my car. Um, I re- I painted it with white Rust-Oleum because I couldn't, I didn't have the time or the money to get a headliner. And I have people sign that car now, um, the roof with Sharpie markers. <laughs> so I have musicians. <laughs> And um, pin-up models that have posed with the car with their signatures on the top. It's really fun. It's like my traveling yearbook. And um, the Orange County Register is a local newspaper out here, and they did a nice little article about about my car, about my Packard, the restoration process, and a nice little photo of Matt and I. Um, you can see a lot of pictures and the full story of the Packard on their website, um, orangecountyregister.com. And the uh, link to that would be called uh, My Totally Hot Car. That's my a totally column that, car. yeah, it's a column they have every week. And my boss has been reading that in the Sunday paper for a long time. And she'd always cut it out for me and knew that I was interested in cars. And so you should really submit, submit a little write-up about your Packard and the story of you and Matt restoring it. And so I did and uh, sent an email on Saturday, and the uh, journalist called me on Monday. <laughs> so oh, cool. that was that was fun. It's it's a great story. That was my first classic, and then I got the comet um, after totaling my college car. It was a 2005 Scion XB. Uh, Matt had custom painted that for me. We had scallops, white scallops on the side. It was black, and the roof was um, pink sparkly metal flake with a rose lace yeah. pattern on top. <laughs> so he did that for me for Valentine's Day. So it was cool, custom painted. I was going to put some white walls on it, but instead I wrapped it around a tree. <laughs> and oh, yeah, um, But it was, it was a blessing in disguise. The car payments, the interest, the insurance costs on a new car, you know, it's killing me. $14,000 car would end up costing me close to 30 when all was said and done. So... Um, we started looking for a classic car for me, something that's in great condition, that I could drive daily, something that didn't need a lot of work, and came across my 61 Comet, 
and I got that in Stockton, California, and have 40,000 original miles on that car when I got it. Um, I have the original window sticker, the bill of sale, the order form when they picked out all their options in 1960 that they wanted on that vehicle. It's a trip. It's, it's a little time capsule. It should have been a museum piece, I'm sure, but um, I just You've done a great job. It. It, looks, it looks really good. Thank you. Just the one I mean, I drive it daily. Also. Yes, I just started, um, I, I'm not an experienced racer. Um, this Saturday um, was my first time on the racetrack. I put a 302 in my car a year ago. That was my birthday Christmas present was a 302 and a C4 transmission, you know, and, and when I put that in, I've been having to do a lot of different modifications because that car was originally had the inline six, a pretty thrift power, weak, weak motor. So I, in April, before I went to Viva Las Vegas, um, I put the 65 Mustang front end on it. And I've changed the tires. I had to put a, a new rear end and change the drive shaft, all sorts of stuff that I had to put into it. So it ended up being quite an expensive gift. <laughs> yeah, well, it does sound like you did quite a bit because I've seen some of these pictures. You know, you do the mechanical. You know, it looks like you're doing some spraying and some welding, and so you do quite mm -hmm. a bit of the rounded. Uh, you know, I weld the floorboards right? in my Packard because of the fact that you know it's a floorboard and it's going to be under it's going to be under some uh, some insulation and some carpet, so there's no no harm no foul there. So I. You know, I, I I took metal shop in high school, but that was ages ago. And um, I just, I you know, I'm not the best at welding, but I, I do like to try to uh, get in there and do it. I, I took Gene Winfield's metalworking class in 2005 and, um, you know, did some hammer and dolly work and used the English wheel. My boyfriend is first off a metal fabricator. I mean, he oh, does really? paint. He does amazing. He does amazing paint jobs. But if it comes down to it, what what would he be most well known as? Is he's definitely a metal man. He's a an artist with metalworking. And um, his his shop it's it's owned by him and his partner is Tom Pruitt, um, who is a very known painter in the industry. Tom Pruitt used to be the painter on Monster Garage. With you need paint everything for Jesse James. So Matt yeah. learned his skills for painting from Tom, and uh, together they make so what, a great what's team. What's the name of their uh, business? Their business is called the De the Department of Customs with a Z on the end. They're in Anaheim, California, and they have been my biggest sponsor throughout throughout all of this. Um, everyone at the Department of Customs will let me use tools. You know, the Gasoline Girls Car Club did not have their own garage. Um, Department of Customs has two shops. We would use the secondary location for the majority of our wrench nights and meetings. Um, you know, they're they're extremely generous. Matt did the um, metal work on Lori's truck. Um, she has this 41 Ford F1 that's bare metal. And the gasoline girls, we did grind off the surface rust of the car and um, using Rolock discs and uh but matthew did the welding reshaping of the fenders um <laughs> good to have friends like that in the in the industry sure. yeah so so matthew did the final um clear coat on the on the truck and it has green and gold ice pearl house of color ice pearl on the truck so uh, you just put the uh, clear coat straight on top of the steel is that yeah yeah Okay. You had to, he had to put like an adhesive promoter first, and then okay. so they so they wouldn't run. But it, it's it's a difficult process because it's hard to get the paint to stick and to not get any runs because there's there's no there's no bondo there's no skim coat or anything. It was just metal with clear coat on it, and um, that truck gets a lot of attention. It looks really great, and yeah, we're really thankful that. that we have we have his shop and his materials to use. So, um, but yeah, these past couple of weeks, um, 
Matthew and I have been putting a lot of time and energy into the comet to get it ready to take on the drag strip. And what inspired me to do this was that I bought a T5 manual transmission just a few weeks ago. And with the T5 swap, I had to end up cutting a hole in the floorboard, of course. I have a bench seat, so we had to notch the bench because I don't want bucket seats. I want to kind of keep my car looking original. And um, I needed to beef up the rear springs. I still hadn't beefed up the rear suspension. So I took my springs to a shop out here called Deeper Springs, and they they beefed them up for me. I put new shocks in the back. And um, we had to um, you get a clutch kit. I got a stage three clutch on there. Matthew bought me a hydraulic throwout bearing. So that's um that's my favorite part of my new car. <laughs> and um yeah, we it's a lot of time, a lot of money. Um yeah, I had to yeah. replace all my gaskets because you can't have any leaks to go on the track. And we, so I finished the night the, before. The, oh, is that right? That's not <laughs> about <laughs> right one, the last one minute, huh? I didn't have the opportunity to really test drive test drive my new car. Um, I had been driving an automatic transmission for the past year with that V8. So it was like I had to teach myself to drive stick again. <laughs> and with that stage three clutch, it was it was, you know, it's a little stiff. And I I just drove it around for a few hours before before I hit the strip. I had it was my test drive, my debut run. So I got out there, I got on the line and um <laughs> um was just I probably had good reaction time, I'd imagine. Um staring at that Christmas tree and, you know, saw the first set of lights blink, the second set, and then when it went green I you know, I I pedaled to the metal man like everyone's been uh rooting for me to do. Granted, I should have maybe taken my first pass, like, slow and steady and gotten to know the track a little bit. But, no, I went balls out, and <laughs> um, and my – I was burning out like crazy. The rear end was bouncing around a little bit, and I was like, okay, I'm not getting any traction. I need to let off the gas. So I let off the gas slightly, and and I gripped. And when I gripped, I it launched my car. I have to see the video. I probably got maybe 20 feet down the drag strip, perhaps. But when it gripped and it launched my car, I snapped my rear axle. The third member might be oh. damaged. I'm I'm not sure. I'm I have to go take apart my car today. It's it's raining right now though. So, but um, it I I could tell immediately. That has to be disappointing. That, yeah, it, I <laughs> I was crushed. I mean, hundreds of people watching and supporting me. The spectators didn't understand what was going on. They didn't know why I was just sitting there on the track, you know. <laughs> go, go. Uh, you know, I put it into first, you know, pressed the gas, wasn't going anywhere. It's like, okay, maybe I maybe I blew my first gear light. Let me try it out. Put it into second, press the gas. At that point, you know, I could hear, you know, the axle, something thumping around. I could tell my rear end was loose. Um so I had to sit on the drag strip and wait for a tow truck to hook me up and pull me off. So I don't know what my car will run. I don't I don't know. I I mean, I literally I just broke my birthday present. <laughs> I just got it and I broke it. I thought I would be driving it all weekend and um no. But I did get a lot of attention on the track. I have to say that um the Chicago pneumatic sticker on my rear quarter panel got seen by a lot of people for a long period of time. It might have just flashed by them for a few seconds. People would have said, hey, did you see that girl on the drag strip? And I'm like, no, what? I missed it. But everybody <laughs> saw me on the drag strip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a little weighed, attention was, there, right? <laughs> yeah, I was I was doing some thumbs down and some some rubbing my eyes like I was crying, uh, waving to the crowd as they passed me by, the K-Rail, everyone leaning over and stuff. Um, but as I started to get towards the starting line where the people kind of saw what happened, when I got to the starting line, those folks were, 
clapping and cheering for me, and it made me break down into tears. <laughs> well, you'll I have to show just, Chicago Mac tools that that was on purpose so they could get more exposure I, that way, was, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, it was a great publicity stunt. <laughs> um, it also helped. It helped um, me work up sympathy for the in the crowd for the pinup pageant that I was in that day. At three o'clock, I hit the stage for the Miss okay. Moon Eyes pageant. And oh, really? So how did that go? <laughs> well, it was again um, near tragedy diverted. It was an emotional roller coaster at the Moon Eyes Christmas party. I had a custom made drag strip girl outfit made um, out of a 1960s pattern with racing stripes on the side, my name, and a big uh, Moon Eyes patch on the back. And this is what I was going to wear on the stage and matching um, red metal flake high heels. And the gal finished my outfit the night before and it didn't fit. It was, oh. I tried it on a couple hours before I was to hit the stage, and it was too small, and there was no way I could go up on stage in it. So I went up and crossed my name off the list and said, oh, I'm not going to be in the pageants. I can't do this. I don't, you know. And then I, again, you know, my boyfriend is, you know, such a great motivator and just you know, won't, doesn't want to let me be defeated. You know, he's just like, well, find your dress. So we... We ran around to the vendors, and it had to be red, green, or white since it was the Christmas party. So Matt buys me a little red dress five minutes before I have to hit the stage. says, <laughs> go find somewhere to put this on. I There was like a small little tent thing, uh, inflatable changing room in someone's uh, booth, and I threw it on. No mirror, had no idea how it looked. Ran up there, ripped off my my wristband for racing and uh hit the stage and um you just have to introduce yourself answer a question you know and uh and the hostess wanted me to tell the crowd you know what brought me there today and tell them about my experience on the drag strip so so I did and um and and it worked I mean I I let the crowd know that I I literally busted my rear showing off for you folks <laughs> so <laughs> Um, you know, please make me the next Miss Moon Eyes. So, and, and it worked. Um, I got first place. I got a nice well, trophy. Some prize money. So well, well, that's, that's <laughs> what it's all about, right? Yeah, so I'm going to use my, my um, check from Moon Eyes to, to get the uh, rear end repaired and get my car back <laughs> on the road. Because um, the, the calm is my daily driver. I have to either drive the Packard or borrow a car and when that's down. So, I mean, I driving modern cars is just miserable to me. So <laughs> I get my car back on the road as soon as possible. Yeah, there's nothing like a lot of last-minute changes. It uh, makes it quite challenging. Um, you was also, you had mentioned you're, you're the founder of Gasoline Girls. Uh, yes. You want to tell us a little bit about what that is? You, yeah, the um the car club developed um I've always wanted to start my own all girls car club, but have a club where we actually work on our cars together. And at Viva Las Vegas, um the second year that I was there, I had my Packard and I had my Comet there, and I met Kristen Martin also known as Grease Girl. She has a little blog called Grease Girl, and she was doing coverage about other Grease Girls at Viva Las Vegas. So she was looking for car girls. So she did an interview with me, and um, my boyfriend, you know, being so assertive, told her that, well, she wants to start her own all-girls car club. You know, you two should get together, and you, you should start something. So that's how it started. Kristen and I just... Um, started helping each other. She would come around Department of Customs and, and um, you know, Matt would tell us what to do and we would get to work and tinker on each other's cars. And um, we spent about a year trying to get the club started, you know, hammering out a name, trying to recruit other people. It's just the two of us, her and I, would go to car shows and be like, all right, this is what we want to do, looking for other car girls. Took about a year, and then um, 
Kristen and I just kept at it. And when we had our first meeting, there were about 12 to 15 girls there that were interested. And um, we had a variety of different names for the club for everyone to vote on. And um, so we passed around a roster. And um, the gasoline girls was pretty much the unanimous choice. And that's when it all started. Um, that was in May uh, of 2010, I believe. So the club's only been around for about a year and a half and just really blew up after that. We have a lot of social media presence and the blog and such and and the Channel 5 News out here, NBC, did a little piece on the gasoline girls and we started having a lot of other people that were interested so the club themselves they have official members and participants um i worked really hard on creating the bylaws for that club and um yeah um it was uh, just recently in in the month of august i did resign from the club because this i decided i wanted to go into more of a mutual marketing, automotive marketing opportunity. And the rest of the club wanted to keep it just as a car club, had no interest in interest in making it a business. So uh, my vision from the get-go is I would, you know, as I started developing relationships with companies like Chicago Pneumatic and Gear Wrench Tools, um, you just you need a tax ID. You need to be able to. They need to have something, somebody to to write off that expense to. You know, so it started to get a little um, complicated, and um, so I decided that I was going to go my own route. So since August, I've been working on developing my own career. I'd like to transition into the automotive industry. And uh, I'm currently in property management, but I would like to have a job that's more geared towards what I'm passionate about. Well, I know uh, you mentioned doing some stuff with CP Tools, and that's where I met you at at SEMA. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of CP Tools because they're, you know, they really support education. They do a lot of, uh, you know, things with education. You know, on Collision Blast, they've, you know, helped out with, uh, you know, uh, contests and things like that, you know, ways to get tools to, you know, the the schools. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with uh, CP Tools? And you're doing some social Certainly. media for them, right? Yeah. Um, my relationship with Chicago Matic Tools began um, a year, about a year ago at SEMA. I was um, just wandering around wearing my, wearing my coveralls. I have um, a pair of uh, Rosie the Riveter style coveralls and, um, and their marketing manager, I, I caught the attention of the marketing manager, and he wanted to take some pictures of me with their with their product. And I had told him about the car club that had, you know, just formed months prior, and he was really excited about the gasoline girls and um, and thought, you know, perhaps we could contribute to their cranked-up conversation, their quarterly newsletter. So that's how it began. We started using their products and writing articles about it, and they would run it in their uh, newsletter. So, okay, and, and I've also noticed, uh, you know, talking about educating people, the, there's a uh, – you kind of help out with some summer camps and things like that for girls. Is that right? Yeah. The Gasoline Girls are looking for a charity that really fit their niche and what we're about and as far as, you know, women working on their own vehicles and educating – young girls um we wanted to inspire young girls and let them know that these careers are out there because i know i i would have gotten involved in the automotive industry at a lot younger age had i known that, that these possibilities did exist and that you know women could do these types of jobs so there's a summer camp in santa monica california and uh, called rosie's girls and they also have camps across across the country and what Rosie's Girls is is it's a vocational summer camp where these young girls um, junior high age mostly they learn non-traditional roles so they'll learn how to do perhaps metalworking, welding um, 
we we wanted to do um, an automotive lesson for these girls because the Rosie's Girls Summer Camp in Santa Monica did not have a automotive. They would do woodworking and things. So Gasoline Girls Car Club, we all drove our classic cars out there, and we had three different little sessions for these girls to revolve around. And the class at which I taught them was how to be a responsible driver. And being a responsible driver doesn't mean just, you know, obeying the stop signs and not talking on your cell phone, but it means to really to maintain your vehicle, to make sure it's safe on the road. So I taught them how to properly check tire pressure. We gave them gasoline girls tire pressure gauges. They were really excited about that. You know, encouraged them to go try it out on their bicycles or you know, on mom and dad's car, and when they are of driving age, you know, their parents will respect the fact that they're trying to, you know, maximize fuel efficiency and make sure the car's safe by checking the wear and the tread of the tire. Showed the girls a little penny trick with the tread. And um, and then we also, I taught them how to identify all the different fluids which are in a vehicle. So I had my Comet, but then I also had one of the members of the Gasoline Girls the participants, she brought in um, a rental car. So we'd have a modern car, too. So we'd show them where washer fluid perhaps is located because I don't have that in the comet, you know. And right. um, I drained some oil purposely so the girls could check and see that it was low, and they got the opportunity to fill up my oil. We also checked the brake fluid, and um, and they just, they just had a ball really getting – to get their hands in the engine compartment. And, you know, I let them identify it, you know, recognize what it would look like should it be leaking, you know, how to check for leaks and what the different fluids look like. I had them all in, like, clear containers so they could see what they all look like. And, um, yeah, the girls just had a ball. We gave them little bandanas, and they got their tire pressure gauges. And, um, and hopefully, I mean, they weren't of driving age yet, but... I mean, hopefully we just encourage them and inspire them to, you know, maybe we might have made a, a couple of new car girls in there, you know. <laughs> well, I think it's great because I don't, you know, just uh, kids in general, I don't think get enough exposure to, to this type of work. And, you know, it's great you're out there doing things like that. Um, also heard you met Jay Leno. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's – um. <laughs> That's Jay Leno, cool. he, you know, he, he lives in, in the Burbank area, and um, there was a car show by another girls' car club. They do an annual show at a store in Burbank called Auto Books. And Auto Books is a bookstore that sells, you know, all automotive magazines and books. And they have this nice little cruise there, so um, I drove the Comet out. I had recently just finished the motor swap in it and um, parked it outside of auto books and I was inside shopping. I picked out a Packard book that had um, a history of Packard motors. I'd like, I wanted to learn and understand my um, flathead V8 a little more. And I had this, you know, huge book. It was probably like $80, this big hardback book and um, a couple of other items. And I was in line about to pay for it. And who's up behind me but Jay Leno, and he's commenting <laughs> on my purchase on the book that I was going to get, and he's like, oh, Packard, huh, and yeah, and I explained to him that I had a Packard, and he was all excited about that, and and he's like, well, you, you realize that that's all airplane motors in there. It doesn't go into automotive. It's all airplane, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much for letting me know that. I almost just wasted some money, you know fascinating but i didn't want to spend that much you know on it if it wasn't going to teach me about about my flathead v8 so so i put the book back but i was also um i also purchased some spark plug earrings that day so whenever people comment on my spark plug earrings i let them know like that's the day i met jay leno but um he asked me if the packard was there and i told him no i had my my comet out front and um he's like oh let's check it out so I walked Daylon over to my car, and I had the hood open, and yeah, I showed him, I showed him my comic, gave him a little tour of the car, fired it up for him. It's pretty exciting, and then um, 
and then he walked over to his Chrysler turbine <laughs> and <laughs> fired that up. It sounded like a Jetson mobile. It was such a trip. And he just like sputtered away in his turbine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's got really about thrilled. one of everything. He's got a yeah. lot of cars. All right. Yeah, um, well, what are your future plans? You got anything uh, you kind of interested in pursuing any area with your goals and, you know, in the future? Well, right now I'm, I'm currently working on Chicago Pneumatics um, social media. So I assist their marketing manager with the Chicago Pneumatics Facebook page. And um, it's a, a new page that they just launched a couple months before SEMA. The site is uh, on Facebook. The, the fan page is Chicago Pneumatic Tools dash USA. So make sure to fan that page. And um, we do lots of little contests, promotions, giveaways for our fans that interact. Um, I have uh, posters. I've been doing spokes modeling for Chicago Pneumatic as well. So they have posters of me out there. Um, and some tool trucks and Oh, by the way, the, the one that you uh, uh -huh. signed for us at SEMA? Yes. The poster that you signed for us and said, uh, you know, told Butler to keep up the good work. We got that hanging in our classroom, so. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so doing that for Chicago Pneumatic, um, you know, I, I was handing out stickers and T-shirts for them at, at the Moon Eyes Christmas party, and so I'm I'm developing my relationship with them, but I also like to get um, a network of automotive companies under my belt that I can do mutual marketing with. Um, I recently did an audition for a television show host position. I was um, contacted to do that, and that's how I met Lou um, Lentino. Um, okay. Lou was um, he's going to be the star of a new show on Velocity. It's a new network by Discovery. And his show will be out in about March of next year. And Lou and I auditioned together. They are also wanting to do a all-female garage uh, product install show. So I auditioned for that, and and that was just a great opportunity. I had the, the chance to get my head shot out there to you know network executives with Discovery I was not chosen for that particular television show, but it has inspired me to w really want to go that direction. I would, I would love to be an automotive television show host. You know, Courtney Hansen is is um, an inspiration to me. You know, someone that I really look up to and would love to follow in her footsteps. Um, I definitely am going to start drag racing some more. I mean, I got a small taste of that drag strip, but <laughs> I loved it. I'm excited. I'm I'm going to, you know, go back to Irwindale and, and go to Pomona anywhere I can, any chance that I get to open my car up on a strip. I'm going to practice between now and next year. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, my future is looking bright. I mean, I, <laughs> I just got engaged. <laughs> And um, thank you, thank you. So, I mean, it's just it's just up from here. Well, Becky, it does sound like you have an exciting uh, future in front of you, and you've got a lot of cool things going on. Uh, just one last thing I'd like you to comment on. You know, of course, I'm always trying to get more people interested in these type of industries. Uh, if there's someone out there that may be interested in this, uh, do you have any advice for them as far as pursuing this type of career? I'd say don't give up, don't get discouraged. It's it's extremely hard to do anything that's that's out of the norm, that's non traditional. Um, you know, stay true to whom you are. Too too often I've I've met too many girls that um feel like to be accepted as one of the guys they have to uh look like one of the guys, you know, and they they have to dress down when they go to the garage because they don't want to be distracting or, um, you know, they, they won't be respected or get as much cred for being a girl in the garage. And for me, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a girl in the garage is what I want to tell the, yeah, all the young girls out there. You know, you don't, you don't have to try to be one of the guys. You, you are a girl that likes cars and embrace that, you know, embrace your femininity 
and and you know still you can still you can still be girly and get greasy and and that's that's what I try to stay true to and you you have to you have to sometimes demand the respect of others and and have to work really hard to prove yourself and it will be a struggle and um just don't you know don't let anyone put hold you back or or keep you down well, that sounds like some good advice. And Becky, I appreciate you taking a few minutes today to to talk with me here. And, and uh, my pleasure. This, so. but good luck to you with your, uh, you know, with all the plans you have, and and I'm sure you'll do fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Make sure to uh, fan Chicago Pneumatics Facebook page, and you can find me on Facebook. Uh, Becky Sue Huff is my profile name. Okay, Becky. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you, Johnny. 